Hey, what's going on guys? It's Tom Mason here, back with another video. And today we're talking camera bags and more specifically this one, the Jitso 30 litre Adventury. So let's get into it. So when it comes to camera bags, I've had a few. Um, that's a bit of an understatement really. I've probably had at least 20, 25 different bags over the years. And that's because you can never find the perfect one. Some are big enough that you can have absolutely boatloads of gear, but every day you don't need boatloads of gear. Uh, sometimes you have a bag that can fit everything, but it doesn't have room for personal stuff. The hip and back system isn't good enough for long hikes or something just isn't right about it. And it doesn't matter how many times you use it, you just don't gel with the bag. So what happens is you buy a boatload of different bags for different situations. And I've got everything from large camera bags to small camera bags, to holster bags, to shoulder bags, you know, the lot. But I'm always looking for something that fills a gap that maybe I didn't have. And when I was at the photography show a couple of years back, I saw this, uh, the Jitso 30 liter. And I thought it'd be a really nice day bag for me. Um, my Whistler 450 is great um, when I'm going on international trips, but when I'm just out for the day, I wanted something that was reasonably small, that could pack down really nice and small, but also expand a bit to carry any of the extra gear I need. And so this looked like it could really fill the gap. Right then, so the 30 litre, let's talk through some of its key specs and features. To start with, the whole design is this nice drab green uh, that's really good for nature photography. It's not too garish, not gonna uh, frighten anything off that's really quite nice. The material on the outside is this ripstop nylon. Um, it's also pretty weather resistant as well, that's really quite nice. Um, I've had it in some really big downpours, some solid rain, and it's sh kind of shed it off with no problems. Um, if you do have really the worst weather you have a waterproof cover at the bottom as well that i'll show you in a second and you can pull out and go over the top so you can keep yourself nice and dry and protected on the outside you've got a couple of pockets so you've got two matching pockets on the outside and um, these are big enough for your kind of accessories you know i've got my accessory pouch in here as well as my mini tripod and a rocket blower easily fit a bottle of water anything like that in here um, that's great I do wish that they were a little bit longer. You know, if they came the whole way up the side here, it'd be great for some of those bigger bottles and things like that. And a stretch mesh on the side um, would be really nice for anything you just want to stuff in there. But, you know, yeah, more than adequate for what I need. On the back here, you've got a little pocket um, that's big enough for your batteries and your memory cards, anything you need to access really quickly, find that perfect. If I'm in a hide, I can just, you know, dip down and get everything out uh, with no issues whatsoever. These have all got the uh, weatherproof YKK zippers. Uh, again, just adds to that weatherproofing. That's really quite good. Keeps the sand out as well, that especially if you work on beaches, it's really quite handy. You've got two big straps here that mean you can strap a tripod to either side or down the back. And then the attachment loops here um, are great if you want to add a molly pouch, just expand your size, anything like that. I personally don't need to because I want to keep it as small and concise as possible. On the bottom, you've got this kind of um, really thick rubbery nylon stuff that's great for when you're putting it down and um, means you don't get any water go through the bag uh, when you're putting it there and you've got that as I said the waterproof cover in the bottom there's another handle here as well and um, it's great you know if you're lifting it up putting it above your head um, in a um, aeroplane or anything like that again you've got that there and a couple of straps on the bottom if you want to put anything across there you know so you can add a lot of gear to this if you need the back itself, um, really simple uh, design. You've got a slightly padded hip belt at the bottom. It's big enough that it's going to take the weight, put it on your hips, um, so you're not going to feel it too much on your shoulders. do wish it was a little more padded because I think sometimes you can load these bags up really heavy, even though it's quite a small size. Um, so some extra padding and maybe a couple of pockets on here would have been quite good. But you know, if I'm just hiking a couple of miles in a day, it's more than adequate for what I need. The back foam is just a straight pad of foam. It's not adjustable or anything, um, but this is really quite nice because it's not that um, kind of mesh that has the holes in it. So if you take it on a sandy beach or anything like that, it doesn't get anything caught in here and all that rubbish kind of trapped inside. So it comes off quite nicely. And one thing I do like is that it opens pretty much flat. You know, it really does open nice and wide um, so you can get a really good access to your kit. Uh, and in here, it's big enough for my telephoto across the top with my camera attached, spare camera, and I've got the 105 macro on, as well as my 24 to 70 and a 35 mil, all in this one bag. 
you know, if you've got a bigger telephoto, a 500, um, you know, it's just about gonna squeeze in here um, on one side. You're not gonna be able to have a camera attached whilst it's there, but you will easily be able to get another camera in and a lens. Of course, test it out before you buy. Um, go to your local camera retailer and, and try stuff out. In the top pouch here, what you've got is a laptop compartment. So you can put an iPad or a laptop in here. Um, I've got my diffusers and stuff like that because I don't really like to have my laptop pressing against my back. And to be honest, most days of the field, I never carry a laptop because I just don't need it. However, if I'm traveling with this bag and using it you know, on a short little trip, what I tend to do is because through the main compartment here, I can access this back piece, I can slide the laptop in the back, it means it's a little bit more protected um, and just keeps it off my back when I'm walking uh, so you're not putting any of that pressure on the screen. So then the top is a roll top enclosure. Um, and this is where you can keep all your kind of outdoor accessories. Uh, I've got my flask in here. Um, of course, you need that cup of tea um, along with a little snack. I've got my smock here, my coat, as well as my mid layer, just in case it gets a little bit chilly. I've got a hat and I've got my waterproof cover, um, but I've still got loads of space in here. I can easily fit my, um, my hide, my throw over hide, a camo net, everything like that inside. Um, and of course it goes right up here and you just turn it over once. You actually do have quite a lot of space. That for us wildlife photography is pretty essential because often as much as we do have big cameras and lenses, you know, those large telephotos, the extra gear that we need is usually um, quite extensive as well. So it's nice that it expands and you can get that extra space. The inside has a kind of divider between this and the main bit of the bag, but you can actually undo the Velcro a bit and then slide your hand all the way down the front. That means that something like an iPad or a laptop, you can fit in here. And um, this is my solar panel. That's quite nice if I want to charge batteries in different places. I can actually just slide that down the front and it fits in no worries whatsoever. Um, and that means that you can get a little bit of extra capacity from the bag. But you know, as a day bag, it will easily fit more than enough for what I need when I'm out in the field. And that is pretty much it. Right, so there you go. A quick look at my day pack of choice, the Jitso Adventure 30 litre. You know, overall, I think it's a really good bag for wildlife photography. Colors nice, fits the right amount of gear for what I use in the field. Nice amount of accessory space for coats and jackets and things, whilst not being too big uh, that I lug too much uh, and end up, you know, stuck in some trees somewhere because I can't get through a gap. You know, it really is quite nice. I do wish that the back system was a little bit more padded for when I'm carrying um, a reasonably heavy load and those side pockets could be a bit longer. But other than that, I think it's a really solid bag. I know I'm gonna be using it for a good few years more. And it's something that, you know, when I'm out for a day, it's the first bag I pick up. Now, of course, if you've got any more questions about the Jitso Adventure, you wanna know anything or I've missed anything, Drop it in the comments below and I'll be more than happy to get back to you guys. Uh, but now as the light's starting to get all right, it's that time of day when the subjects start to venture out. I'm gonna crack on with my wildlife photography. And of course, if I find anything, I'll show you what I'm looking at. But until the next one, guys, get out there, enjoy your wildlife photography and go make some cracking images. And I'll see you soon.